Do you want to know how we hatch hundreds of copper python babies every year? How we cut eggs, how we sex them and how we organize them? Let's find out in this video. Hello everyone and welcome to another video. My name is Philip, I'm the founder of Star Pythons and today I will show you how we hatch out hundreds of carpet pythons every year. We will start with cutting the eggs when the clutches are due and then I'll demonstrate how to sex the hatchlings and explain how we keep and organize our offspring. Enjoy this video. Let's start with cutting eggs and why we are actually cutting eggs. Now, baby snakes, when they are still inside the egg, have a very special tooth, and that's the so-called egg tooth. The egg tooth is uh, located on a bone that's called the premaxilla. And for my bachelor's thesis in biology back in the day, I actually had the topic of the skull morphology in copper pythons. So, and part of that project was printing 3D bones of, carp of the copper python and skulls so this is what you see right here and as you can see this premaxilla is located in between the upper jaw and where you see this little red dot that's the location where this egg tooth would be and that's actually used by the snakes to cut through the eggshell and to get out of the egg now if this egg tooth is missing for any reason, um, the little ones can't make it out of the egg and they drown. So that's something we want to prevent. And so whenever we see the first ones of a clutch pippin, we decide to cut the rest of the eggs to be on the safe side. So today we will take care of clutch number 56, which is actually due yesterday. And since None of the little ones have started cutting the egg yet. Um, I'll make sure to uh, cut the eggs in case one of them has any issues with the egg tooth. And um, yep, yeah, so I will ensure that all of them will get out of the egg safely. So the first thing I will do is gently get the grid up from the incubation box and I'll use tweezers to do this. I'll go here in the grid and then um, lift it up without the eggs moving around. So you have to be really careful. You do not want to tilt too much so that no eggs, maybe sometimes they do not stick together. Um, then they could roll over, fall down. You absolutely want to prevent this. So always make sure to be really, really careful here. So obviously we need tweezers and very sharp scissors so that we can penetrate the eggshell with minimum force needed. So let's start with the first egg here. Just use a very very shallow angle and minimal force. As I said when your uh, scissors are really sharp then it's not an issue. And there are blood vessels underneath the eggshell. So sometimes you will see um, a little bit of blood coming out of the egg. That's not a problem. But as you can see, I'm just going in there for maybe a millimeter or something like that. So it's really just to allow the snake to stick its little head out. So you always feel a little bit like a surgeon when working here. Um, can be quite stressful and um, it's totally fine if you are nervous doing this because you know there's a live snake inside and you absolutely want to make sure not to harm the snake of course. So take your time as you've seen. I'm always turning the grid around 
as I need it so that I have the, the perfect working um, position for myself. What's also a, a general trick is uh, what makes your life much easier if you have um, corners like maybe you can see it here corners like this one that stick a little out then of course it's much easier to to get in there because you can absolutely be sure that there's no snake underneath so and then cut it like this never ever um, push the scissors inside the egg always make sure to have this very 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 shallow angle So that's it. We are done with the clutch. Um, all eggs. Oh no, I forgot one. It's underneath here. The ones that are um, at the bottom of the clutch are, can be a little tricky. But um, yeah, I mean, in doubt, if you can't reach it, just leave it alone. And um, I mean, they should hatch, right? It's nature. We're just helping a little bit here in case. But um, yeah, so basically when all the eggs are cut and as I already said, I do not cut windows in there like you sometimes see, especially with um, ball python breeders who cut um, uh, a large window in there to see what's inside. Now, of course, in this case, I know what's inside, but even if I'm waiting for really fancy color or pattern mutations, I do not cut any larger openings inside the eggs. It will um, always be this very, very fine cut. Um, so the only purpose here is that the snake can get out in case there's something wrong with the egg tooth. So, and then basically tomorrow or in the next couple of days, we should see the first Morelia Breti sticking their head out of the eggs. Now it's two days later and our beautiful Centralians have started hatching. Um, as you can see, it looks really successful. And something that I want to highlight here is that no matter if you already cut the eggs or not, of course, they will still try to get out of their own. So as you can see here on this egg, um, they actually, if the egg tooth is uh, intact and working good, they'll actually start to cut the eggs on their own. So the cut that we made is really just kind of an emergency exit. So next step for us will be sexing the little ones and then I'll show you how we organize our babies here. Now that all the Bradleys are hatching, uh, of course we need to sex them. And the best moment to sex carpet pythons is right after they have hatched, uh, when you move them from the incubator to their tops. Um, the easiest method is the so-called popping, where you manually evert the hemipenis of male hatchlings by applying gentle but firm pressure on the ventral side of the cloaca using your thumb while you roll your other thumb from the tail towards the cloaca. If the hatchling is a male and if the procedure is performed properly, then the hemipenis will be forced out of the cloaca and can be seen as a red-tipped or in some color mutations also pale protrusion. No surprise, if it's a female you won't see any hemipenis, but you might see the scent gland uh, with some white milky secretion. It is highly recommended to train the procedure with a more experienced fellow keeper as the little ones are still a bit fragile and you do not want to accidentally injure the animal and damage the vertebrae of the tail. Um, as I already said, popping works best when the hatchlings are right out of the egg and the snake should not be older than just a couple of days or weeks because otherwise they gain more muscular control over the hemipenis which then can result in males being identified as females. 
If you want to sex larger animals, probing is the best way to do so, but that's going to be part of another video. Something many people ask me about is how do I hold the animals for popping? And I'll show you using this very special color mutation here. It's a very yellow carpet python, right? So what I do, when they are in the clutch, when they are just out of the egg, they do not bite. They are just sitting there and waiting for something to happen. And what I always do is I uh, place the head, I take, I take the snake, and then I place the head in between my pinky and my ring finger, like so. And then, of course, I turn the snake around and here, where you can hopefully see the red uh, the, the black marking, this is where we want to simulate the cloaca to be. And as I just said, with my left hand thumb, I put with gentle but firm pressure here in front of the cloaca here. And then with my other thumb, I'll roll towards the cloaca. And that's the procedure I just described. And if it's performed correctly, then you'll see the hemipenis popping out right there where you can see this black mark. Once we have checked the sex of the little ones, we move them individually to these Braplast boxes. Um, these are basically plastic tops where we have uh, drilled vent holes in there, eight on each side. And then we always start with paper towel, and that's because sometimes the navel is not fully closed yet and parts of the umbilical cord are still visible, so we do not want to cover those in bedding, in the softwood bedding that we would use later. So we start off with paper towel. And then, of course, we always have a perch because uh, corporate pythons are arboreal snakes and they really like to climb up here and especially when feeding this helps a lot to give them the chance to move onto this perch. As you've already seen in other videos we are using these Arborex by Lanzo Herb Cages manufactured here in Germany and all the shelves are equipped with a 15 watt heat mat that's again as you've seen in our other cage video directly connected at some points with a probe and then all the wiring goes up here and there you see one of those um, t-control computers that we are also used with our larger cages to control the temperature within the shelves now as you see every hatchling that hatches here at star pythons gets one of these cards and they always have the same system so of course in the middle you see what the snake actually is. So in this case it's a caramel exotic jack head granite male from 2025. Then the blue number in the lower left corner that's actually the official number that this animal has in our breeding book that needs to be registered with the local authorities. And on the right hand side the one that's in red says 2025 21. That's our clutch number. So this will always allow us uh, to easily identify the parents of the snakes. In the upper left corner, you see another uh, date in red, and that's when this animal had its first chat here with us after hatching. And in the upper right corner, you see the three blue lines. Uh, they are indicating that this animal actually already had three males so it's good to go and leave us uh, to its new home. And that's pretty much the whole process here. Um, of course, it all starts with breeding at some point and then uh, you have to wait uh, two months until they start to hatch. Now we start cutting eggs when we see the first one pipping. Uh, in case of the uh, bread lie clutch that we are talking about today, it's actually um, the case that the due date was passed. So I was surprised, as you can see in the video. And uh, yeah, so we decided to just cut them to be on the safe side in case there is something wrong 
But hey, we could see that all of them hatched great. Clutch looks good. Um, all of them were happy, healthy little snakes. And um, yeah, they'll be looking for new homes soon. And so as always, check the description um, and go to corporatepythons.com slash available to see when they are up for sale. As always, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.